Hi, everyone. This is Tanya Cottrell. I am a Blue Diamond Wellness Advocate Leader with doTERRA, and I want to welcome you to this webinar called How to Teach a Great Class. And this is really meant to be an instructional, almost like an instru instructional manual that you can use to teach your very best class. And if you are brand new to doTERRA, welcome. And I'm so glad that you are interested in learning how to teach classes for yourself. Now, what I want to tell you right from the beginning is this does not have to be rocket science. It really needs to be simple, and it is okay to make it your own, and it is okay to do it imperfectly. I don't do every class the same, and so I am going to teach you some specific do's and don'ts and some great talk, talking tips that can really give you language to use, that can really increase the success of your classes. But I really, my hesitation is I really don't want you to feel bogged down by all of this information and feel like it's too much, I can't, I can't grasp it all and then regurgitate it all into a class. So please know that these are, tips are meant to help, but it's not a prison for you to operate within. You can take what works for you. You can add other things that you find work for you. You can subtract things out that don't feel like a fit for you. And I want to encourage you to just start and try it, and it's okay to fumble through. It's okay to write things down and read. Um, you will find that it becomes so, so simple and such second nature the more that you do it. So please take these as guidelines, a little bit of um, – what I have developed after years of fumbling through and figuring out what worked well for me and what didn't work. And so let's get started with talking about the numbers game. The numbers game is all about sharing with people, making contacts, and inviting a lot of people to your classes. And the reason that this is so important is you can do all of the activities correctly and teach a wonderful, wonderful class. But if you don't have the numbers game working on your side, you're not going to move forward in your business. And some of our leaders have done some company-wide statistics, and there's a few versions of this out there, but the one that seems to be the most relied on is this idea of inviting 100 people to your classes. And I really suggest having multiple classes available that people can choose from to come. So you're going to up your chances of um, confirmed guests if they have more than one date and time to pick from. But inviting 100 people, and that doesn't mean launching out an email to 100 people. It doesn't mean sending out an evite or doing a social media event invitation or even posting on social media. That doesn't really count because that you show they're very ineffective. So we're talking about personally inviting, having a conversation with someone, reaching out. Sometimes it's by phone. If it can be by phone or face-to-face, -face, that is the very best shot. Um, if you don't have a phone number and it's not someone you see face-to-face -face and you have to send a text message or an email, you can, but make it personal. And the more personal and the more direct, the better. And getting someone an oil experience, putting some peppermint on them, Having them try a beadlet, giving them a sample to try, that really ups your percentage. So we're talking about quality, personal, individual inviting here. But if you do that with 100 people, statistically, about 45 of those people will actually come to one of your events. And out of those 45 people, statistically, about 20 to 25 will enroll. And out of those 20 to 25 people, about 12 of them will do something with sharing or building. Um, they might end up enrolling someone at some point. And about four of those people will actually choose to build their own doTERRA business at some level. Okay, so without a high level of contact and inviting, we don't have much chance of getting those quality people on our team. And your averages might be a little different higher or lower, that's okay. I just want you to get that picture that the numbers game is so important. So it all comes down to making a great contact list and continuing to expand it 
and challenge yourself because you know more people than you think you do. And you can always meet more and more people. So keep those contacting and inviting numbers high. And you already have 90% of the battle won when it comes to having a successful class. In all of this, keep it simple. When you're planning a class, you want the planning process to be simple. You want the setup to be simple. You want the teaching to be simple, the script to be simple, the clothes to be simple. And the, one reason for this is you don't want to lose your mind and exhaust yourself and burn out. You want to have something that's very easy to replicate on a regular basis for yourself. Now, it's going to feel overwhelming the first few times, but as you repeat it, it should be a very simple format. The other reason is it needs to appear simple to other people because no one wants to join you if they think, oh, my word, you have to know so much science to have a doTERRA business. Or you have to be able to cook all this amazing food with essential oils to have a doTERRA business. Or, wow, you have to be able to present with the fanciest PowerPoint and talk for two hours and have, boy, you have to buy a lot of supplies and set up an elaborate display to do each class. No, thank you. I have been to parties where people sell kitchen and cooking tools, and that has never appealed to me because I saw all of that stuff they had to haul in and all of the cooking they had to do and all of the dishes they had to wash and pack up and go home, and I thought, no, thank you, not for me. So we are in the business of keeping it very simple, very, very simple. It's very important to remember. Now, I suggest having a simple way to carry your supplies from class to class if you're doing them in other homes, which is your goal. When you're first starting out, you probably don't want to invest a lot of money in anything fancy. Now, if you have some sort of really great craft cart or wheeling cart, you can use that, but you don't need to go out and spend a lot of money buying something. I really suggest doing what I did because I started and tried to keep my budget really, really low. And so I just grabbed a suitcase, and my suitcase wasn't even nearly as nice as this one. I just found a suitcase that I could roll, and I shoved all my class stuff in there, and that's what I took to classes because it's so much easier to have stuff pre-packed. You just check and make sure your supplies are stocked, um, that you have enough, and you can throw it in your car, and you can go. And people need to see that when you arrive, you just whip in with your stuff, and you set it up, and you don't have to make a dozen trips to the car and do a lot of work. So get a suitcase or find something simple to carry your supplies. So let's talk about how to set up and what supplies you need. I took a couple photos of a class I did, and you might be doing a class in a home. This class was actually in a sort of a meeting room at a Perkins restaurant that I used one time. Um, so we had tables. And what, when I first started doing classes, I liked to sit around the living room. But as I continued to go on, I realized I really like having people sitting around a table. And they can write, and it feels very, you know, like a class and very educational. Um, and you have a place to put everything. So every class is going to be different. But if you're at a table, it does add a little bit of a nice element. Um, this is what I set out at classes, and I keep it really, really basic. Um, for a long time, I did not even use product guides because I was keeping my costs down. Now I have found I really like the product guides. I don't go through them in the class, but I do like them to have them because the graphics are so nice, the pictures are nice, they're, it, they're not too expensive, um, and they take something home and they can sit and browse and shop, and everything in there has compliant language. So I have really enjoyed adding the product catalog to their take-home materials, but you don't have to have it either. Um, I suggest having one class handout. I prefer to use the class in the box handouts because we can get them from doTERRA. They come in that wonderful class in a box set. It's easy for people to duplicate and order and just add onto their LRP. It's a nice like four page. It has the front and back that tells about oils that you go through that info in the class. And it's got your price sheet, it's got your kit menu, and it's got your enrollment form that can tear off. It's just an all-in-one, very simple. And so under the product catalog, that's what I have there is the class in the box brochure. Now at this particular class, I had some business opportunity brochures that you can see tucked under there. If you have something like that, um, I'm not quite sure that doTERRA is printing these anymore. Um, but if they do have a brochure like that, it can be nice to send them home with that, even if you don't go over it in class in detail. 
but you don't have to have that either. And so aside from those um, items, even if it's just a class handout, that's all they need. If it has the price sheet in the order form and a little thing about oil, that's all you really need. The other things are bonus. Then I like to have some essential oil resource books. And um, there's a few different types out there. And so you could get the ones I have here, and I have a few different sizes, or you could get um, another type that you like. You don't have to have one for every single person either. It gets heavy to carry a lot if you have a big class. You just need at least probably enough for about half your class, ideally. If you only have one book, though, still do your class. You can make it work. People can pass around. But this does make it pretty functional to have you know, a stack of them around for people to grab, and they can take turns and share. And then you want to have some oils. You may only have, you know, a family physician's kit, or you may just have a lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Um, ideally, you'll have more, but if that's what you have, that's enough to do a class. If you're really short on oils, you can also see if your upline has some empty bottles you can use, and they can maybe even help you by filling just a little, a few drops at the bottom so at least people can smell them. And you can have more for your display. That's another option. Um, you can have a case. You can have a wooden box, just something to have you know, the basic oils you're going to talk about. I always like to have deep blue rub out and fractionated coconut oil, especially in case somebody gets something in their eye or something. Um, you can see I have a little flip chart. It's actually old. It's not compliant, so I don't even use it anymore. But it has a nice pretty picture, so sometimes I set that on the table as just a pretty background. But you don't need anything like that. And I have it sitting on my diffuser box, my aroma light diffuser box. And off the edge of the picture, I do have a diffuser going. If you have a diffuser, set your diffuser up. Put in something that smells great. I like to carry it in the box for transportation and then either use the box to prop up something in my display or I'll even use the box and open it up as a place to put door prize slips as your dish. Try to just be very efficient on how much stuff I'm bringing. And then I don't show it in this picture, but I do often like to have the Lifelong Vitality box with the three empty bottles. And it's nice to even keep one capsule of each in the bottle in case they want to see what they look like. Um, but that can be a nice added thing to display. Other than that, I don't display any other product. It gets too complicated. You want it to be simple so it looks like something people can think, that's pretty easy, I could do that. Okay, let's talk about our script. What do we say? But more importantly, what do we not say? I first want to tell you some things to avoid saying. These are things... Um, are more important in a lot of ways than the things that you do want to say. So let's go over some common um, self-sabotaging phrases that you're going to want to avoid, and they're very tempting things to say. Some of them you happen during the inviting process and some of them in the class. But you want to avoid saying these, and if someone's hosting a class for you, you kind of want to put this on their radar ahead of time, like you don't say these type of things because it really sabotages our class results. So the first thing is, you don't have to buy anything. Now, this I did this, and my upline teases me about it. He says, Kenya, you did this when you started, and thank goodness I got over it really fast, because this will kill a class so fast. And this happens when people have hang-ups about money, and I had hang-ups about money, and I'm so worried about putting people out and them feeling pressured to spend money, and it was ridiculous, because... I don't have to make that decision for them. They know they don't have to buy anything. They are either going to or they're not going to based on their own financial decisions and their own purchasing decisions. And it's really insulting for us to try to talk people out of spending money because we think that they shouldn't or we're worried that they shouldn't. Um, this can happen in the inviting process. Saying, just come and learn. I just want you to come and learn. You don't have to buy anything. We're so afraid of what people think of us, and they really aren't even worried about that like we think that they are, okay? So just be okay not telling people they don't have to buy anything because they're not idiots. They know that they don't have to buy anything. And when we say it, we're actually subliminally telling them, don't buy anything because if you do, that's outside of the realm of what I'm trying to create here. And you won't have people buy anything. That's just how it works. I just want you to learn. Now, we want our classes to be about education. And if people come and they learn and they don't buy anything, we can be fine with that. But that doesn't mean that 
they should feel weird about wanting to get oils. We don't have to overly emphasize, just come and learn. We can say, you can come and learn a lot of great things, but we don't have to, like, put this weird twist on it. Like, just come and learn. Don't have to buy anything. It's all about education. We're over emphasizing that part and again talking them out of purchasing oils and we want them to get oils in their home it's good for them you could just get a $35 membership and a few oils now this is an example of talking down an enrollment purchase so we're basically giving them enrollment options and then we're we're leading them into whatever would be the what seems like the cheapest way possible because again we have money hang-ups and we're worried about other people's money, and it's really not our place to worry about that. And some people who have been on tight budgets have come to my classes and have wanted to get a large kit because they see it as a way to solve some of their problems and actually save money on other things they're having to spend money on for their health. And so who am I to try to talk them out of that or try to downsell them on a lower enrollment purchase? Or to say, you could just buy retail. It's silly. We don't want to say that because we're actually talking them into doing something that's not in their best interest. I've taught classes before where my host or my brand new builders, I'll be sharing kits and then I'll see someone looking at a kit and the person will walk up and go, or you could just get the intro packet with three or the intro kit with the lemon, lavender, and peppermint. And that's a great thing to start with. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? They're looking at a natural solutions kit. So just be very conscious of that. We do it because we feel awkward. I'm not really doing the business. So this um, making sure that people don't think something bad about us trying to earn income or trying to be involved in the business is really sabotaging because you're sending a message that there's something wrong with doing the business. And then you're not going to ever find anyone to do the business with you. So if you really do want to grow income, don't be afraid to let people know you're doing this for business. There's nothing unethical about that or sleazy about that. You're not going to be obnoxious about trying to get their in their money or trying to make money. Of course you want to do it with integrity. Of course you want to help them. And of course you don't want to sell anything to anyone that they don't want to make the purchase. We're not going to do that. We're not going to pressure anyone into it. But you also don't have to say, I'm not really doing the business, especially if you really are trying to earn income. Now you have an integrity issue because you're trying to fly under the radar and you're pretending to be somebody that doesn't care about income, but really you care about, care about income. So just be honest with your friends, family, and your contacts and your guests. It's okay to say, I am doing this as a business and I'm so excited because this is going to do some really great things in my life, adding the income that comes with this. What a fun job I have. And doTERRA is actually paying me. Take your time and think about it. Now, if somebody needs time, we encourage them to take their time and think about it if that's what they say to us. We gave them that option. But when somebody's actually thinking about making a purchase and then you say, you should take your time and think about it, then in their mind, they want to do what seems like the right normal thing to do too. Everyone's insecure and they want to go with what seems to be the path everyone does. So if they hear you say, take your time and think about it, they're going to delay their decision because it feels you're making them feel like there's something wrong or impulsive about deciding and making a purchase. The more they delay it, the less chance they're going to follow through with it. And they may end up enrolling with someone else, especially if you're acting like you're not in this for the business. Then someone else they know that is, they're going to want to help them out. So don't talk someone out of making a purchase when they're ready to make a purchase. I know they're kind of expensive. Okay, again, if you're saying this, it means you have some money hang-ups. And I'm saying this because I did and I had to work through some of my own personal baggage and emotional stuff around that, and a lot of us do. So um, stop worrying about how much they cost. They're not expensive. That's a relative term. They are valued for exactly what they are valued at. We have the best quality oils. We price them for what their value is. And no one's getting ripped off here. They're getting an incredible value. They're getting something they can use for a long time. It will last them a long time. It will give them profound results, and it will help them. 
It is worth every penny that they spend. So we focus on the value, not the expense. We don't want people to think these are overpriced. These are expensive. I can't afford these. We want people to think, wow, this is going to save me money. Wow, this is going to help me. This is so valuable to me. Because, again, some people that are on tight budgets will not bat an eye spending money when they see the value and it's a good, wise purchase for them to make. Or you could just start with, I think I kind of covered this already, just when they're honing in on something and then we're going to throw out another option that's less, we're talking them out of their purchase. Okay, I'm looking for people to sell. Whenever we talk about I'm selling doTERRA and I'm selling oils and I want to find some more people to sell with me, oh my gosh, it's, it just repels people. Do not use the word sell. So many people have awkward um, feelings and uncomfortable feelings around the word sell because they've either been approached by somebody that was selling in an uncomfortable way and pressuring them, or they themselves have had some sort of sales position that made them uncomfortable because it required them to talk people into making purchases that maybe weren't valuable. Whatever it is, nobody really wants to consider themselves someone in the business of selling. And there's nothing wrong with selling, but there's just a lot of negative um, perceptions and a lot of negative emotions associated with. So it makes people, like, run from it. So don't say, I just cringe when I see team members posting on Facebook, I'm looking for some more people to sell oils with me. And I think, oh, gosh, no one's going to want to join with you. So we don't sell we don't recruit. We share. We educate. Okay? And we partner with people. We use terminology like that because it's more in line with our culture because that's our approach. Okay, throughout your class, I want you to think about this concept, and that is talking about your why. You're going to want to add some personal stories into your class. Not too many but a little bit. Now, when you're talking about the oils, you're going to want to, before you start talking about what they can do, you're going to want to say why you use oils in your home and maybe even tell a story. Because when people make their actual purchasing decisions, they make it with the emotional side of their brain, not the logical side of their brain. So we can talk all day about the logical reasons to use essential oils. But when it comes down to it, they will connect with you making that decision for yourself and why you made it. And they will choose based on why they want what they hear you saying you have. So I talk about how oils have changed our family, how my kids have become empowered over their health, how I have the tools to use to help my family when they have a health care need, how, what it has set us free from, how it has saved us money, and why essential oils are such a big part of our life. And I also talk about why I decided to start teaching other people about essential oils and why I decided to make this my business and why we do this, my husband and I do this for a living. This is what we do. We have gone all in with doTERRA. And I tell them why, why that has changed our lives, why we love our jobs, why we love teaching people about oils and that it's such an awesome thing that we get to do. When I first started, it hadn't completely become our sole source of income, but I talked about why I was choosing to start this business and what I intended it to become. You know, I would say I'm doing this because I wanted to earn extra money for my family for this. And it's really awesome to that this is what I get to build. Um, so whatever that is for you in whatever phase you're in, talk about your why. Throughout the class, you're going to talk about, I like to kind of bookend when I talk about the oils with some personal testimony at the beginning and at the end. And I also like to add in why I teach classes, why I do what I, what I do, she, briefly, um, because that is how they're going to emotionally connect to what you're doing and they're going to see it as attractive and some are going to want to join you in that. Okay, so let's talk about what to say. I Now, this is not a script per se. I am going to share with you some key phrases that I have found to be extremely helpful in having a successful class. It's not 
I'm not going to go over the full class script. You get to make that your own, especially when you're talking about the products. It's very simple. Pass around the products. Tell just a little bit about what that product does or why you love it. And you can change it up every time. Make it your own. What I'm going to talk to you about is a few things to say in the introduction and a few things to say towards the end that I kind of practice saying and found a rhythm to where it just kind of rolls off my tongue naturally after some practice. And these phrases, I watch people's reactions and I watch their minds open up and I watch them nod their heads and I watch them agree with me and I watch them enroll. And so I have found some of these phrases and I've learned them from other leaders that really help people to connect with you and let their guard down, listen to what you have to say, and want what you're talking about, okay? So I think it's good sometime at the very beginning of your class that you state your goal and that you state your goal is to get these essential oils into people's homes. It is just fine and awesome to say, my goal is to get these oils into your homes. Now there's no question. Nobody's going to feel uncomfortable wondering, what are you trying to get out of them? You're not saying, my goal is to make money off of you. And it's not your goal. You want to help people. You want to get oils in their homes. That is awesome. You're bringing essential oils into people's homes. They know that that involves you making a sale. They also are hearing you say, this is an important thing that you're recommending for their lives. And there's no question about what you're trying to accomplish here. So state the goal of your class. And this is beginning a process that, In marketing, a lot of people will call assuming the sale. We don't like to really talk about sales. Maybe you don't like that terminology, but we do want people to enroll. So let's just talk about assuming the enrollments, okay? Assuming getting oils into people's homes. When people want to know how to close a class well, it's important to understand it isn't the last phrase that you say at the end of the class. It isn't the last section of the class. That closing starts at the beginning, and it's some things you're saying throughout the class that assumes the enrollment, that opens up people's minds to enrolling as you're teaching, so by the time you get to the end, they are ready to jump in. It's really, really important. This starts that process. My goal is to get these essential oils into your homes. You're already assuming the enrollment. Now, you're going to give people the freedom to not purchase and not enroll. So don't worry about that. You're not going to high pressure them and I'm going to teach you how to not pressure them. And I never pressure people. In in the three and a half years I've been building a business, I have never once felt like I've pressured anyone to make a purchase they weren't excited about. Here's how we take the pressure off people. And I love this. One of my uplines taught me this and it, it works so, so well. It's kind of a lighthearted thing that I say that helps everybody feel at ease and it gives them permission to not buy, but it still assumes that the majority of the class will want to enroll. And so um, let me just read through this so you see what I mean. So it starts with, by the way, I'm making these talking bubbles and I'm typing these catchphrases out in them. So you have a visual. If you need to write it down or take a photo or pause, you can go back and reflect on these things and You don't have to memorize them all for your first class, but you can slowly start to add them in, and I think you'll see that they help. So this is what I say. Some of you are going to want to get started with the oils right away. If that's you, please know that we will be able to help you with that tonight so that you can have them right away within the week. So I've already let them know there's going to be a process at the end where we can get you enrolled right here on the spot, okay? We're assuming that enrollment. And and then I go into, some of you will want to go home and think about it. And that's okay too. If that's you, I want to assure you that I will follow up with you tomorrow or the next day to help you with any questions you still have. So I'm telling them to expect a follow-up. That way it's not going to be awkward when I follow up. I'm following up as a service to them. And I kind of chuckle and say this one lightheartedly. I'll say, some of you might just think that I'm nuts after listening to me talk in this class. And if you do, just know that's okay too. Just have some fun and relax. And I promise at least you're going to go home smelling great. And everybody just kind of chuckles, laughs, 
and you see their shoulders drop and you see them take a deep breath and you see them engage with you. They let their guard down. Now, I have never had anyone in a class say, I think you're crazy at the end of it. I think you're nuts. I think this essential oil thing is total junk. Nobody ever has ever said that to me. But by get, by adding this little humorous tidbit in here, now everyone knows I don't have to spend money if I don't want to. I don't have to buy this. She won't be offended. It's not going to be awkward. I can just listen to what she has to say and make a decision. I've already assumed the enrollments. They already know that most people are going to want to get oils in their home by the first two types of people I talked about. But this lets them out of the squeeze box, and it makes everyone feel comfortable and listen. So then I'll move into, let me show you the handout that we're going through tonight. And this is an important part. I'll get that. I, I use the class of the box handout, and I say, let me just show you what you have in front of you, and we're going to be going through this tonight, and I want to point a few things out to you. First, I want to show you the product list with prices. So I'll make them open it up to that second page, or to the middle, and say, let's look at this price list. And I always point this out for two reasons. I tell them this flat out. I say, first, I want to show you the product list with prices, and I want to point this out to you for two reasons. First, I hate going to presentations where they won't tell you the price until the end. And again, they all let their guard down. They nod their heads. They even laugh. They'll go, yes, totally. I feel the same way. All of a sudden, you're their new best friend. You're on the same page. They're listening to you. They trust you. And second, this page makes an excellent note-taking tool. Mark the oils that you're interested in as I talk about them so you remember because we're going to go through a lot of oils. And if you don't mark them, you'll forget which oil you were thinking that you needed for, you know, digestive support. So I'll say make a little tally mark by the ones that you're interested in. Maybe make a note about why. There's a couple of reasons why this is helpful. At the end, if you're looking for the best kit or bundle to get so that you get the most for your money, I can help you by looking at your notes and easily seeing what you're interested in. And I know these kits and bundles backwards and forwards, and I can point you to the cheapest option for you. So it really does help me help you um, get the best deal. Now, what did I, what did I say in there that's going to help with the close? I've, I'm letting them know that, one, I'm going to guide them through making their purchase decision. Two, I let them know that there are kits and bundles, so they're already expecting to learn about that later. Three, they know that some of those kits and bundles are going to save them money. And we're essentially coaching them to create a wish list, and it's going to make the process easier for them. So we're, again, opening that door to that purchasing and decision-making process by giving them some direction on that price sheet. As they do it, they're filling out their own wish list and their own order form in a way. Okay, so we've gone through this much. I want to just say congratulations. You have officially assumed the enrollment. 90% of your clothing is done and you haven't even started teaching about oils yet. I am dead serious about that. I know it sounds very simple. It is simple. If you go through those steps at the beginning, it's going to make all the difference when you close your class. Keep your class short. <laughs> this was the hardest thing for me to learn. I love information. I liked teaching. I learned, I did, used to hate public speaking and teaching, but I have learned to love it. And I love just talking about oils and telling them everything that I learned. And it was so hard for me to leave out details that I had learned that I wanted them to know. And my classes would sometimes be like two-hour classes. One of my uplines said, if you cannot get in and out of there and be done with your class in an hour, you are talking too long. And I was like, she is crazy. There is no way I could do it in an hour. Let me tell you, she was not crazy. She was very wise, and I had to learn the hard way. Because you lose people's attention if you talk too long. You lose people's attention if you give them too much information. And you lose people's attention if you keep them there too long. They get annoyed. And you, no one's going to want to duplicate you because a class is complicated. And you have to have all this information. And it looks exhausting. So keep your presentation time to 45 minutes. That's all I do now. 45 minutes because that saves time at the end 
to go around and visit with people individually, and that is the sweet spot of the class. That is when you're going to close some enrollments and you're going to get some dialogues going that you can follow up with and even close enrollments later or book classes or find builders, okay? You need to have that time. If you talk too long in your presentation, they will slip out the door and you won't get a chance to talk to them. I tell people at the beginning, I'm going to be talking for about 45 minutes. I want to be respectful of your time. So after 45 minutes, um, we'll have some time so that I can help you individually. So they know that's part of the class. Let's say the class is going to consist of about 45 minutes of me talking, and then we're going to have about 30 minutes or so where I can go around and help you individually, and you can ask me questions, and you can look up things in the book so they don't rush out the door as soon as you're done talking. Okay. Once you get um, through that initial intro, and you're probably going to share a story about how the oils have changed your life, it's time to just start getting lids off bottles. I can't emphasize how important it is to get the lids off the bottles and get oils on people. The oil experience is powerful. These oils sell themselves if people get to smell them and try them. You're going to start with getting peppermint out. <coughs> Excuse me. I really like to get peppermint on people. Now, just remember to have your coconut oil around because some people peppermint is really strong on. If someone says, this is really strong, dilute it. Put, rub some pe coconut oil over the top of them. Um, <clears throat> get peppermint on them early in the class because this is an attention grabber. This is your wow moment. Peppermint impresses. So I have people take a drop, rub it between their hands, rub it into their neck and shoulder muscles, cup their hands, inhale the vapors. I warn them not to touch their eyes. And you have their attention. And they just apply the oils topically and aromatically. And they should feel alert. You point out some of the things that they feel or ask them how they feel and just say, let that temperament soak in as I teach the class and see what you notice. And then I'll usually share like maybe five to seven oils. Don't share too many. It gets too much information overload and too much sensory overload. Okay, here's a tip that I want you to, to really take note of. Yes, share some of the oils in the natural solutions, or excuse me, in the family physician kit, but don't share all 10 of them. And nobody enjoys smelling oregano, so I leave that one out, okay, from smelling. Um, but share some of the oils that are in the bigger kits, like the natural solutions kit. If you only share oils that are in the family physician's kit, you will only sell family physician's kits. And you and I both know that that's not the best way to start. Now, if that's what someone can afford, it's a great way to start. There's nothing wrong with starting with a family physician's kit. We encourage them if that's where, if that's what they want to take a, a you know, splurge on, that's a great purchase. But how many people say, if I could go back to when I enrolled, I would have bought a natural solutions kit or I would have bought a diamond kit. I would have bought a diamond kit if I could go back and and purchase a diamond kit. Um, we all know that we would have purchased more because it would have been such a great deal, especially when we look at that fast track on the LRP. Those bigger kits give us bigger earning potential right away. So we don't want to limit them to the family physician's kit. And that's, if that's all we feature, that's all that they're going to see the need to, to purchase. After talking about some oils, I talk about the Lifelong Vitality Pack. This is our number one selling product. This gets people to really fully embrace the oil lifestyle. I feel that people have the best results with the oils when they have this foundation of the daily supplements. If you're not on them yourself yet, I highly encourage you to try them. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee um, and that's what helped my husband and I take the plunge and try them um, with that guarantee that we could get our money back. And we never went back. We loved them. We felt great on them. Don't spend too much time talking about all the science and all the ingredients. It's just boring to people. Um, I usually have some sort of handout or a, they, make a, they make a booklet, actually, you can get from doTERRA. Put it on your LRP. Have some of those with you. So if you get one of those people in your class, it's like a supplement junkie that knows everything about supplements and they want to read up on it. You have a piece of literature to give them, but you don't need to teach all of that. Um, I just, I talk about 
the personal story part about why I take these and why I feel great on them. I talk about the difference I notice in my teenagers in their mood when they take them. I talk about the, you know, the, the major points that people tend to notice how it really helps to support a healthy inflammatory response, how it really helps um, people with their mood lifting or increasing their energy. Those are things that people are looking for or that it helps to support the immune system. Um, Keep it short, but really hit on those points that people are looking for a better quality of life in those areas. When you are working to get people on loyalty rewards orders, this is key because it's the cheapest way. You can only get the three-pack on LRP. And if you're going to be ordering this monthly, it only makes sense to go on an LRP. So honestly, I feel like my business organization has lifelong vitality as its backbone. So it's definitely important to feature at a class. Okay, let's go back to some great things to say now that you've talked about the product. By the way, I would say about 30 minutes into your class, you need to be moving into this last final section of your class, which you might refer to as the closing, even though you've been saying things that are closing all along. You are going to want to be talking about enrolling in all of this by about 30 minutes if you want to close it up within that 45-minute range. So after I show all the products, I'll say, now let me show you how you can get your oils at that wholesale price. When I show them that that price sheet in the beginning, I'm going to go back and explain this because I didn't mention it before, but I usually will point out that there's two price columns and I don't explain the difference between them or how to get wholesale at that point. I just say, you'll notice there's two columns. There's a retail price and a wholesale price. Just so that you know which one to look at, the wholesale one is in bold for a reason. That's how most people buy their oil. So as you're going along, if you're wondering how much something costs, pay attention to that wholesale price. Now, did you catch what I did there? I, again, I assumed the enrollment clear at the beginning by pointing out the wholesale one is the smartest one. It's what most people use. That's what you're going to want. That's how much that oil is going to cost you. They're already, they don't understand what a wholesale membership is yet, but they're already thinking, oh, she'll explain that later because wholesale is what I'm going to want. So when I talk about wholesale prices, they're already assuming that that's the best option, Okay. So I'll say, let me show you how you can get your oils at that wholesale price. This is how I talk about membership. The Wellness Advocate membership is a wholesale membership. Some hold this membership to build a business like myself, but many people hold it simply to shop at wholesale. And I'll again say that's how most people buy their oils. Psychologically, people will always be drawn to what most people are doing. It's just the psychology of following the herd. Now, there's two ways to get that wholesale membership. The first is to pay a $35 fee, and then you can build whatever order you want, all a cart, and get that wholesale price right on your initial order. And I'll mention, you know, for your renewal annually, it's $25, but you get a $20 bottle of peppermint. So it's very inexpensive to stay on as a member. And the only requirement to stay active with your membership is to purchase one product every year. And did you catch how I kind of slowed that down when I said is the only requirement is to purchase one product every year? I do that on purpose because they're waiting for the catch. And they're expecting you to say that there's a requirement for purchasing monthly. And so when you say the only requirement is that you purchase one product every, they're waiting for you to say month, and instead you say year. And they think, what? That's so easy. I can totally purchase one product a year. Um, And it's becoming more and more appealing to them. The second way to get to wholesale membership and it's the most popular way is to start with an enrollment kit because the kits are discounted even farther than wholesale and the larger the kit, the deeper the discount, plus they all come with a free membership so you don't have to pay the $35 fee. That leads right into 
talking about kits, which is awesome, I do point out a few benefits about that wholesale membership. We'll say wholesale members, as a wellness advocate, you always get the wholesale prices. It's as simple as getting a member number and a password. You log on to your account, and whenever you order, that discount is just automatic. You and Right there, I've let them know they're going to be in charge of their own orders, which people actually like nowadays. They're not going to go through me, and I'm not delivering it to them. You're already getting them used to the idea that they're going to log on and, and do their own orders. You get access to all of the company's specials, and you also have access to another great perk called the Loyalty Rewards Program, which is our rebate program. People love the idea of rebate. I'm using terminology that they're familiar with. I might say a wholesale membership is kind of, to me, like like a Costco membership because I'm paying a fee and I'm getting just so I have access to the best price. They, they relate to that. When they say it's like a rebate program, they relate to that, okay? Now, this loyalty rewards program, I don't get into too many details in the class. I know it's awesome if people enroll right there and set up their LRP. Personally, for me, that doesn't happen very often. I do much better getting them on LRP when I follow up with them and I do a membership overview later, okay? But I want them to know it exists from the beginning because when I come back later and meet with them and talk to them, I'm going to explain it in more detail and they're going to get it easier. So people have a hard time digesting all this info. They just are trying to digest wholesale member. And then if they have to go through all the details of loyalty rewards, they're like, forget it. This is too complicated. So I just, I just hit on a couple points. I'll say, now this loyalty rewards program, we call it the LRP. Think of it as like frequent flyer points. See, you're connecting it to something they already relate to and they see as a good positive thing that's for their benefit. I'll say on your orders, you're, you're, it's when you're ordering regularly, it gives you a way to earn points back on your purchases and it, it grows. It starts at 10% and every few months it, it bumps up 5% until you lock in at 30%. And everything I spend, I get 30% back as points banked in my account, and I can spend them like cash. Sometimes I'll even tell people, it, to me, it's kind of like Kohl's cash. I purchase, I get this like rebate, like credit that I can then redeem whenever I want and spend it like cash to buy more oils. And then I'll say, I highly recommend it because it's the most budget-friendly way to purchase. And most wholesale members will choose to opt into the loyalty rewards program because it saves them so much money. It's how most people purchase their oils. So they're relating because they're thinking, well, I'm budget conscious. I'll even say if you're a frugal person, if you're a budget conscious person, this is definitely the smartest way to buy oils. Everybody wants to be smart. Everybody wants to do what most people are doing. Everybody wants to do it the cheapest way. They are considering themselves budget conscious and frugal. And so all of this is kind of like, yes, 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 that's me, that's me. Okay, I might have to look into that, all right? So you open their mind to it, even if they aren't setting it up right then. And then after you hit on those points, move on. Do not camp out on loyalty rewards because you're going to get everyone flustered and confused. Just move on. Okay, I move on to the kits. Okay, so let me show you some of the most popular kits. And we turn to that kit page. I don't go through them all. I just kind of hit on three categories, okay? The first one is the big kits. I always start with the big kits. Now, if you never talk about the big kits, you're never going to sell a big kit. And it's okay if you talk about the big kits all day long and you, and you don't sell one. You're still going to do better over the course of time if you're at least telling them about it. And it does something psychological when you talk about them in this order. I'll say, now we have these, um, the Every Oil Kit and the Diamond Kit are our largest kits. These kits are great if you want the most product for your money because they're the most heavily discounted kits. And if you want to start with having all the oils in your house so that no matter what issue comes along, you're prepared, this is a really smart way to go. These are also great entrepreneurial kits for those of you who are wanting to start a business. Okay, so 
that's an important thing to say because you're not pressuring anybody into the business. You're saying for any for those of you who are, but you are assuming that there's people in the room that will want to start a business. Okay, and it gets them thinking about it. And if they are thinking about a business, it also gets them to start thinking, ooh, starting with one of these big kits is probably a smart way to invest into my business. Then I moved all the way down to the family physician kit. And I'll say the family physician kit is popular. It's It's what we call our sampler kit. And I love to use the word sampler because really, You and I know that these oils aren't going to last them a really long time because they're smaller bottles, okay? It's not that it's a bad kit, but we don't want them to think that it's bigger than it is. So I'll say the Family Physician Kit is our sampler kit. It has 10 of the most popular oils, but they're in smaller bottles. So it gives you a wider variety for your money so you can try more things, but you have a little bit less of them. Um, keep in mind with this kit, it doesn't come with a diffuser and it doesn't come with the fractionated coconut oil so you don't have the carrier oil. So you, if with the purchase of this kit, you're going to be using the oils internally and topically, which if you're going through the, the class handout when you talk about oils, you will have taught them those three methods. But you're not going to be really using them aromatically unless you want to add on a diffuser. And I do highly recommend adding on a fractionated fractionated coconut oil for safety and for diluting because a lot of the methods of using, especially if you have children in your home, require diluting. I hardly ever sell a family physician kit without a bottle of coconut oil added on because they say that. Now, if they look at this and they think that they want the aromatic use too, and so they start looking at a diffuser, then you can individually point them to the home essentials kit, which has a higher value in a diffuser. But I don't really focus on that one in the class so much, only individually when I work with them if we're trying to upgrade into that. So then I will hit on the Natural Solutions Kit as my last one. And honestly, it's because this is my favorite kit and this is the kit I really love to sell. And it's better for me. I get a much higher volume out of my class, but it's so much better for them because you and I both know they're going to have such a better experience with the oils if they have more oils to use. They have a diffuser. They have, you know, the people who rub the toothpaste and the supplements. I want them to start with the supplements. I honestly would rather see someone start with a natural solutions kit than with an every oil kit because they have the supplements. And the supplements gives them a better experience, gets them more excited. I feel like they have better results with the oils when they have those great omega-3 supplements to the cells. The cell membrane is very pliable, so the lipophilic oils get in. That's my personal opinion. I also want to see them get on LRP soon. And if they already start on the supplements and they want them the second month, that's a great lead-in to the LRP. So I love featuring this kit. So I'll so I see how I went to the highest kits, and then I went to the lowest, and then I'm bringing them up to the middle. So it doesn't feel as expensive and overwhelming as those big ones we talked about, but it feels like a much better value than that sampler kit, okay? So all these are the key points that I'll say about Natural Solutions Kit. I always tell them, this is my favorite starter kit. It's the most popular kit that, we, that people enroll with. Company-wide, it's the most popular kit. It's a great variety of products. It's a great value, and the discount is um, the discount that exists in this kit basically makes it so that Aroma Light Diffuser is free. And I'll point out that the Aroma Light Diffuser is like eighty nine dollars wholesale normally. I think it's like a hundred and nineteen or something retail. And so, and I'll point out, and you get your supplements too. Because when they're listening to supplements, they might think, that's great, I'd love to have them, but how much does that cost? I better just start with oils. But when they see this kit and they go, well, I can get the free diffuser with it. And this is a great value because then I get the supplements too. I'd love to try those. Um, Again, you're saying it's the most popular kit. You're playing into that. It's the herd mentality. And it is the most popular kit for good reason. Okay, then we move past the kits. And I'll go to that last enrollment sheet. And I'll say, for those of you who are ready to enroll as a wholesale member, here's how you'll get your account set up. People need directions. They actually need to be told how to fill out their form and to go ahead and do that now. 
because they don't do anything that they're not directed to do in a class setting, I promise you. You might think you have intelligent people that'll just take charge, but they won't. It's not human nature. So we have to direct them into this actual closing um, activity. Notice how I said for those of you who are ready to enroll, I don't say if you're ready to enroll. If anyone here is ready to enroll, I say for those of you who are ready to enroll. So I'm assuming that there are people in this room that are ready to enroll and they're going to assume the same thing and they're going to not want to miss out on that, okay? You'll see your enrollments go up higher if you do it this way and you'll see more people enroll on the spot if you do it this way. You might have a class where people don't enroll on the spot. It's okay. Don't feel like a failure. My first class, zero people enrolled. But I kept going. And I still have classes where nobody enrolls. So every class is different. Don't let one class determine your success. But use this technique. You'll notice across the board you, you'll have higher enrollments. For those of you who are ready to enroll as a wholesale member, here's how you'll get your account set up. Find this section on your enrollment form. It's like the section number two. We kind of skip over that where they take out the kit and we go right down to where they put their name on. That's where I direct them. I say, find this section on your enrollment form and I'll, I'll get a pen in my hand so I can kind of point with it. And start writing your name here and then just fill out all of the highlighted areas. That's all the information that those here is going to need to set up your account. Okay? When I'm saying... Find this section here where it says name and start writing your name here and then fill out these highlighted areas. You're actually giving them a specific instruction to start filling it out. And it's so funny how human psychology, we won't fill out the form until someone tells us to fill out the form. And I watch this and if I do it this way, I see people start writing on their form. And if I don't say this, they'll tuck the form away to do later. And then it's, you have another obstacle to try to come back and get that done. And I tell them you can tear it off and hand it in to me at, tonight if they're ready to set up their account. And I say, I'll help you fill out the order portion and I can help you look at the kit options. Because that part's a little overwhelming to people and they might not yet know what they want. But we want them to make the decision to set up the account, get their info filled out to begin with. Then we help them pick out their enrollment order. Okay, then you're going to end with the door prizes section. And this is very important. It's not just for fun. It's not just to get people to come to the class, although it helps. It's because you want to collect their follow-up info and you want them to communicate to you on those door prize cards. And sometimes people will communicate on those in ways that they wouldn't verbally communicate to. And so you don't want to miss that information. So I will usually have a prize for everyone so that I can collect everyone's information. And then I'll have a, sep a second prize for those that mark on their sheet that they want to host a class. And that's a great way to book classes from classes, okay? We have more trainings that go into this in more detail on how to really master that class hosting, booking classes from classes process, um, our launching your business, um, effectively launching your business training goes through that. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, but I do like to have a price. Now, don't spend too much money on your prizes because you want to keep your overhead low as you're starting your business because you want your business to be profitable. You also don't want it to appear that you have to spend a lot of money to have a class and to do this business. When I was starting my business, I personally used homemade products as my hostess gifts. I mean, my door prize gifts a lot because they were inexpensive to make. You could make an, uh, um, a pillow spray or a bath salt or something pretty inexpensively with not a lot of oils and it's an item that they can't purchase. So we don't want them to win something they were thinking about purchasing because then it takes away from their purchase. And they might think, oh, I got a bottle of peppermint. Hmm. Or I got an intro kit. Hmm. Maybe I'll wait on that family physician kit and just try this first and see if it works. And then see it delays their purchase. So you want to give them something that isn't going to compete with their own enrollment purchase. The keychains, the doTERRA keychains, those are really great. Those don't compete with their purchase and they really like them. It gives them something they want oils to fill up. Use, the, use good slips that collect good information. And I'm going to tell you the questions I have on my... Now I'll have a section on the top that says name, phone number, email. Okay? And then I have a little section with these three questions and I'll have a yes no, maybe, with little boxes beside 
There's three little boxes beside each one with a yes, no, maybe column. Okay? Does that make sense? I have one made up that's printable. You can get it through our um, team Facebook group in the files if you need that. But um, you can make up your own too. But use these questions. I'd like more information about how to get doTERRA essential oils at wholesale cost. So if someone walks out the door and you don't know if they want to enroll, they're telling you right there, I'm interested in enrolling or I might be interested in enrolling. I'd like more information about hosting my own oil class. This is how you're going to do your door prize for your class host. You're going to say anyone that marks yes or maybe about hosting a class gets entered into this second door prize. And when I collect them, I'll ask again, does anyone want to change their sheet and host a class to be in this drawing? I might point out that some of them mark that. And I'll say, does anybody else? I don't want to miss anybody. Because sometimes they'll go, oh, yeah, maybe I will. And then I like more information about earning income with doTERRA. <coughs> I have found builders by noticing that they checked on their thing, on their door price slip. And they weren't bold enough to come right out and say it, but they checked maybe or yes on that. And it helped me know to follow up with that and get them information, okay? One of your primary goals at your classes are to book classes from classes. Yes, you're trying to enroll, but you also want to book more classes. And you want to tell them, I'm looking for class hosts. Be bold and say, I'm launching my business and it would really help me out to have some more class hosts. And so if you know of people that could use to learn about essential oils, that this could actually help, I would love to come do a little class for you. And you can even offer a hostess gift. And if you do that, if you have someone hosting the class you're teaching, I'll give them their gift in front of everyone and say, thank you so much for hosting this class. Here's your gift. If you'd like to earn this gift, there's a lot of different ways to do that. So I'm not going to button you into one option here, but just think, book classes from classes. So those those door prize sheets are helpful for that. Sitting down and talking to people afterwards and asking them if they're interested in hosting a class is a great way to do that. And if they are, get it scheduled before they leave. Now you're done talking and you want to encourage people to spend time looking things up in the books and tell them, I'm going to come around and try to answer questions and help each of you. And you really have a goal of connecting with each person. You will do much better in your follow-up. You have a much better chance of having them join your team, having them enroll, having them even possibly host a class or share or build if you get a personal connection with them. So go around and sit with them and sit right down beside them and say, um, do you have any questions I can answer? Can I help you find recommendations for personal health issues? I'll even have them list three of them, and we'll start writing down the recommendations for each one together. And then I can give them some guidance if it feels overwhelming. And I can say, you know, you may want to look at just starting with one oil for each of these health issues and then adding more later if you want more help. Or you could just start tackling one or two of these issues at a time. You know, unless they're ready to jump in with all of them. But then I can kind of look at their wish sheet. I can look at their health issues and the recommendations and point out some kit options that are going to help them get started. And I can also tell them if, you know, a kit doesn't really fit, you might want to just do the 35 and actually build your own kit. Because that is a legitimate option for some people. But you want them to start with enough oils to see some results. So don't down talk them into a 35 enrollment with like one or two bottles of oil. Talk them into a kit that's going to serve them well or building their own kit in a significant way that's going to serve them well. Learn to ask some key questions in those personal conversations, all right? Don't keep it vague and wait for them to close their own enrollment. You ask those key questions that are going to lead into finalizing that process. Here are some key questions. When were you thinking about maybe having a class? So this is a this is a really important phrasing. This is for the people that marked maybe on hosting a class. If they are said yes, then you say, I'd like to get your class book. Let me give you some options. But if they said maybe, which a lot of people do, you throw the word maybe back in on the question because then it keeps it so they don't feel pressured, but you're still asking about scheduling a class. When were you thinking about maybe having a class? And then when you're in that conversation about booking it, 
you're going to give them options. You're not going to just let them try to say when, oh, maybe next month or maybe. You're going to say, let me give you some options of dates I have open. And you're going to give them like two to three options at the most. Even if your calendar is totally clear, take out a couple of them. Come to the class prepared knowing some of your available dates and say, you know, I've got March 2nd in the evening open. I've also got March 6th, which is a Saturday in the morning open. Would either of those work for you? If they absolutely don't work, give them another option. But that helps them make the decision. If it's too wide open, they won't land on one. This is the the question, like the most important question when you sit and talk to them. Are you interested in setting up an account tonight? It doesn't feel threatening. Are you interested in setting up an account tonight? You're just you're asking them as a service. So if they are interested, you're finding out that, you know, it's like you're if you're a waitress and you come to the table and you say, are you ready to order your main entrees? You're not pressuring them into anything. You're just asking them if they're ready, if they're interested, okay? And that's how you're going to get the answers. To go, yeah, I am kind of thinking about um, getting this kit and the conversation opens up into that enrollment process. Which kit seemed most appealing to you? That's a good question to ask. They're going to reveal to you what they're looking at. If they're completely drawing a blank, then you can say, um, let me look at your wish or your wish list or your, your notes page, and we'll see if there's any that fit. And then give them a couple options in a couple price ranges, okay? Um, but don't sit around and wait for them to initiate the enrollment process. You're putting the awkwardness on them. You're the professional here. Offer your assistance in this enrollment process and you'll see a lot more people enroll from your classes. I'm going to end you just with an encouragement. The start is what stops most people. So if you're just, you got through listening to this and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't even remember all this. How am I going to do it? And it's overwhelming. Don't worry about it. Just start. Just get some people around in a room and start talking about oils. You can tweak it and add these key phrases in as you get more comfortable. And you can improve it as you grow as a builder. The worst thing you can do is wait and say, i got to study more. I have to study my essential oil knowledge more. I have to get all my supplies organized. I have to study my script more. I have to get comfortable talking in front of people. All those things, it will perpetually stall out your process and you'll never get your business launched, okay? So just starting is more important, even if you completely fluster it. I have flustered things and I have watched builders start their business and do their first classes and really mess things up. Um, Some really, really brutal (laughs) classes and yet they're successful today because they jumped in and they did it. So be willing to get out of your comfort zone and just go for it. Here's a little tip. What I really like to encourage people to do is invite some of your friends and family to come for your practice class or for a couple of practice classes. It's a great way to let people know you're starting a business and launching a business and you're kind of putting it out there. It's also a great way to get people to come. They want to be helpful to you, and you're you're not putting any pressure on them to buy anything. You're just saying, I need an audience. I want to practice teaching my essential oil classes as I start my business. Would you come be in my audience? Well, it's so funny how many people enroll from those practice classes because they get to hear the whole thing, and they're just as drawn to the reason you're doing this business and the reason you're using oils, and they love the product too. So it's a very comfortable way to start and invite people and it's very comfortable for them to, they want to help you and listen and then it gets you started. So I hope that you will consider that tip. I'm going to end you with this quote. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Thank you for joining me today. Blessings to you as you start your business and as you teach your first class.